How to understand and take advantage of your brain algorithm. The word algorithm doesn't have to scare you. It simply refers to a flow of inputs, processes, and the output of these processed inputs. Simple, right? It is instructive to note that there are two aspects of our brain that are responsible for creating behavioral patterns from situations. The rational thinking part, which is controlled by the neocortex, and the emotional part, controlled by the limbic system. The role of the rational thinking and emotional aspects of our brains must be studied so that we can harness their powers and become better at decision making. There are a few principles that have proven helpful in understanding these two components and we would look at them in this video. The human brain works pretty much like this. The computer was made by men, so it only stands to reason that somewhere and somehow we would act like computing machines. It would take in thoughts, events, or circumstances, process this information from these happenings, and then react accordingly. The little challenge, however, is that there are two critical actors that influence how we eventually react to these pieces of information we receive. These are the factual actors and the emotional actors. To avoid or minimize the input of any of these actors would be to lead a suboptimal life. In other words, our behavior is the output of these two factors that work on our processing ability. Our algorithm is ultimately responsible for how we respond to just about everything in life. Because of this all-important role that our brain algorithm plays in our day-to-day -day life, it is pertinent that we are equipped with the functionality of our algorithm. This is where the powerful concept of emotional intelligence comes in. According to Daniel Goleman, emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions, and to recognize, understand, and influence the emotions of others. As rational thinking people, without emotions we would still make a wreck of our lives as our decisions would be really terrible. This is evidenced in the case of Elliot, a patient of a neurologist, Antonia Damasio. Elliot had surgery following a tumor on his frontal lobe. After the surgery, the once upon a time prosperous, intelligent role model to many began to lose a grip on his life. He lost his ability to focus on anything, lost his job and marriage, made poor investment decisions, and lost a second marriage shortly afterward. When Damasio examined him, he was found to have a very high IQ, an excellent memory for numbers, and could predict with high accuracy estimations based on incomplete data. So the challenge was not his rational ability to make decisions, it was his emotional side. When he was also shown traumatic pictures, they didn't evoke any emotions in him. While we may celebrate our ability to be rational, we would be leaving a ton on the table if we completely ignore and shut down our emotions. The truth is, while analysis is great, life has a number of complex variables, and more often than not, a carefully thought out strategy or analysis would still fall short in its ability to accurately make the right decision for you. So you must strive to build a healthy relationship between your rational thinking and your emotions. Man is by default a social being. He loves to belong to a community and a social class. From Europe to Africa, families have always been large in the past centuries or decades. This points to the fact that human beings love to belong to communities, or a defined large set of people. The desire to belong can affect the way we react to things in our lives. No one likes to be ostracized. It is pretty much a primal desire in men. If we perceive that our actions would be received negatively by people, we're likely to refrain from taking such actions. While there are negative hurtful actions that should be avoided because of their nature and their ability to affect the general good of the community, there is also the possibility of losing out on the opportunities to pass across a great idea or learn something powerful because we were unsure how we would be perceived.
We are a summation of our daily interactions with the world. Algorithms are formed based on the actions or inactions of people, or perceptions about things and people that we interact with. As children, for instance, we may have learned to cry to express our need for food. The first time this happened, we cried because of hunger pangs. But after seeing the reactions of our mothers, it became a signal whenever we felt hungry. So the input is, I feel hungry. The process is, if I cry, mama is going to feed me. And the output is, I will cry. Almost all of our interpretations of things follow this pathway. We form algorithms based on the initial outcomes of our actions. So we end up believing, if I want ABC done, then I must do XYZ. There are useful algorithms developed as children, but negative algorithms can also be developed. It is possible to misunderstand scenarios that you saw growing up and conclude that they must be avoided at all costs. For instance, if you had parents who argued and afterwards saw angry expressions on their faces, you might be forced into thinking that voicing your divergent concerns would get people mad or upset with you, and so you would naturally refrain from speaking up your opinions. Unfortunately, this might translate into a phobia for sharing ideas at your place of work or very important fora because of the fear of being misunderstood. This principle is built on the human need to stay connected within a community. This might also make you permit people to take you or your time for granted. Remember, no one knows all that you are going through. If you do not draw the lines, people would feel free to cross the lines, take advantage of your availability, and use you to achieve their goals. Sometimes, it is okay to say no and to stand by it. Apart from negative algorithms learned, there are also great and positive algorithms that come with growing up. The challenge with these algorithms is that, more often than not, we take them for granted and believe that these bright points are not so special after all. To make the best of your brain algorithms, it is beneficial to do the following. Ask for feedback. The truth is every man is perfect in his own eyes. We would never critically analyze ourselves fairly. It would take an unbiased appraisal of another person or system to point out the flaws that we need to work on. Never be afraid of feedback. Surround yourself with people to whom you are accountable. People who can recognize your bad breath and call your attention to it. This is different from negative and toxic people who never see the good in you or whatever you do. If you are scared of feedback, you may never optimize your life. Even if you do not like what you hear from this feedback, it would at least give you an idea of people's perceptions of you. Keep a journal. Practice journaling. In your journal, do your best to track your emotional changes. Ask yourself what made your emotions change after a certain event. If you can find the triggers of your emotions, then you would be poised to better manage them when similar scenarios come up. If you attended a meeting and left upset, seek to know when you lost your enthusiasm and switch to quietness, timidity, or anger. Ask yourself if you could have reacted differently and study your options. Resolve to take a healthy course of action if this happens again. These can only be possible when you keep relevant records of your emotional changes. If you learned anything from this video, then we are sure you would be invested in knowing what to do with your algorithm to avoid procrastination. Yes, we would be delving into something like that in our next video. Be sure to be here for it. Thank you for watching.